What's up guys, I'm back again and today I'm going to talk about my piercings because in my last video, which you should go watch, I said I was going to go more in depth on like piercing stuff. So here we are. Today I'm going to talk about my eyebrow piercings and my vertical labret piercings. I kind of touched on them in my birthday video, which you should also watch, but I did not go like in depth on everything. I'm going to update you on those too, but I'm going to start with the eyebrow piercings. So, if you are interested, go ahead, stick around, and let's get into this. So, before I talk about my experience, I'm going to give you a little knowledge on eyebrow piercings. These are surface piercings, and these should be done with curved barbells, no rings, or like straight things, or like anchors, or anything. So, my, actually, my little sheet here, my eyebrows were pierced with 16 gauge jewelry, and it's 7 16 in length. This is titanium jewelry, and it's the kind that like pops out. It's not the internally threaded kind, it literally just pops out. So that's kind of scary for me because there have been a few times where it's popped out, and I'm like, because <gasps> it's so easy to lose it. I don't know why they would give me the pop out jewelry. Because I usually only ever see it being used with nose jewelry. So let me talk about placement. Eyebrows can be placed anywhere along the eyebrow, like there are a bunch of different eyebrow placements and they're all anatomy dependent. So it depends which ones you can get or if you can even get an eyebrow piercing in the first place. But I originally wanted to get inner or frontal eyebrow piercings and my piercer kind of declined before she even saw my anatomy. So I'm not sure if I, I really still want the frontal eyebrow ones but I don't really know if I can get them because I don't think she declined them based on anatomy. I just don't think she was comfortable with it. And when I asked around, me and empath sensed that there are nerves, like a bunch of ocular nerves here, and that's why I couldn't get it. I think another reason she might not have wanted to place it there is because of the migration or rejection risk. Because when you move your eyebrows, like... There's just a lot of movement in that area, so they do have a bigger chance of migrating or rejecting out completely, which I have never had my eyebrow piercings reject, but it's valid. I have actually had my eyebrows pierced six times now, I think. No, five times. I've had two eyebrow piercings here, and then I've done it on this side once, so, and then with these ones, that makes five. Let me talk about the pain levels compared between all of those eyebrow piercings. So, the ones on the end, I couldn't feel it at all. And the ones, like, right here, near, near in the middle more, I couldn't really feel those at all. They were, like, a one or two out of ten. And with these, my piercer actually used lubed needles because I went to a very experienced piercer. So, she used pre-lubed needles, which makes it slide through easier. And the clamps were actually so, like, they were cool to the touch, and it made me not feel it at all. Like, she put the clamp on, I was like, oh, this feels kind of good. And then she poked it. I felt the initial poke, but I didn't feel it go in or through or the jewelry being, like, threaded through. I didn't feel the jewelry being placed in at all, which is crazy, because usually the jewelry being put in is the worst part like i was really dreading that being done because it hurts so bad with these ones when the jewelry is put in but with the eyebrows like i did not feel it at all so this piercing i would rate a one or two out of ten at most like not even two like a one out of ten easier than lobes definitely and i don't think them being placed closer to the front made any difference but i think it might just be because i had such an experienced piercer i was warned that there was a risk of bruising having any piercing in my ocular region, but I think only white people bruise. I have never seen bruises on a person of color. Healing is going to be at least three to six months. These piercings take a long time to heal, especially for me. It takes at least six months for me to heal an eyebrow piercing. Eyebrows are very temperamental piercings, especially for if you're wearing makeup or if you like up keep your eyebrows like plucking waxing i don't really pluck near my eyebrows and i don't wax or thread so i don't really have problems with that i don't really do my eyebrows now that i have the piercings because i find that when i've 
putting makeup near my piercing, my eyebrow piercing before it was ready before, it made the healing process much harder. So I try really hard to stay away from putting makeup around that area. Even though I have been staying really safe about it, there's still bumps because like I have this running theory that no matter like if you get it professionally done or non-professionally done, I feel like eyebrow piercings will always get bumps. I just, everyone I know always gets bumps on their eyebrow piercings and I feel like that's just a part of having an eyebrow piercing at this point. But if you know why that is or like can prove me wrong on that, please let me know. So basically, here's my experience part. I went to this really far away studio because their prices were really good and their piercer was really experienced. Like she actually checks anatomy and stuff. I've been trying to find a piercer like that for a while and I finally came across one. So I was like, okay, let me go. I get in the shop and her assistant comes out and she's like checking what jewelry I want and asking me where I want them done. And that's why I tell her I want like them on the very front. And she's like, oh, let me go see if she's okay with that. And I was like, okay. And then I ate curry. I'm sorry. My like teeth are yellow. Her assistant comes back out and she's like, um, we can work on the placement, but she's not comfortable with the front. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess we'll not get the front today. <laughs> so I go back there. I sit in her chair. Sometimes piercers have me like sit up while they're doing the piercing, but she had me lay down. So I laid back in the chair. I was chilling. And my heart was beating so fast because they were playing really loud music in the studio, which is something I don't get. Like, why do you play such, like, loud, upbeat music in, like, piercing and tattoo studios? Because it just makes the anxiety so much worse. I don't know. For me, personally, I like softer music when things like that are happening to me. Before I, like, laid back and shit, she pinched the area and then, like, made me do this a bunch at her just to see where the least movement she could put it was. And that that made me feel so comforted, like knowing that she like actually was experienced. <laughs> but then I like lied back down after we checked the placement. And then she started setting up and it took her so long to set up. I was looking getting so much more anxious, but it was nice having someone put a lot of time into the service that I was paying for. Then she put the clamps on and they were so cool to the touch, it actually felt good. And then she just like pierced it. And I felt a little poke at the beginning, like when she was like placing where the needle would go in. But that was it. I didn't feel the jewelry go through or anything. I didn't feel the piercing being done at all. And then it was just done. <laughs> so that was my best piercing experience ever, 10 out of 10. Now we are going to talk about my vertical labrays, just like a little update on them. These go through the shelf of my bottom lip. I cannot put a ring in this because it would pull on the tissue and rings are not suited for vertical labrays. They go straight through the lip and you need a curved barbell in this piercing. I was pierced with 16 gauge, eight millimeter titanium jewelry. And once I downsize, I will need six millimeter jewelry, which I tried to downsize, but I just don't think it was ready. But also there's so much space still hanging out so it looks like it's ready to downsize, but I don't actually think it is. But I just don't know if like the six millimeter doesn't fit my lip and I need like a seven millimeter. I kind of think that's the case, but it's hard to find like off size jewelry like that. So for the swelling, my lip swelled a lot, but I feel like not as much with my labre piercing, but the swelling with the vertical labre was more annoying and persistent. Like, it didn't swell as big as my labrae piercing, but it swelled for longer. It was way more annoying. And these ones were, like, swollen for, like, four or five days. I'm sorry, I'm always, like, I'm always moving my nose piercings. <laughs> I get asked a lot, like, how these piercings are with my braces, and these do not enter the oral cavity. They are outside of my mouth, so unless I play with the jewelry, I'm not gonna chip my teeth on it. Like, there's not as much of a chance teeth getting fucked up and my gums especially because these will not touch my gums at all unless I like pull my lip in. So that's a big pro with vertical labrays and they won't get stuck in my braces since they don't like go inside. I've never had them slip into my mouth and slip under my braces or anything or had any problems with that. The pain level for these was about a 4 out of 10. Your lip has a bunch of nerves in it. It is a little bit more painful than a labray piercing 
So that was like a 4 out of 10. While these are healing, you can't wear chapstick at all. Also, your lips will be more prone to being dry while they are healing, so you just have to stay super hydrated. I personally still put on chapstick while they were healing and nothing bad happened to me, but you're not supposed to. Last but not least, aftercare. I recommend the Neomed spray, which is right here. I don't think anyone should be using anything but sterile saline wound wash, but I caved because like, I had really bad bumps on here and I was like, okay, I need to like find something else because I've been washing every day with the Neomed spray, but it does not do shit for me usually. Like it's good for non-temperamental pieces. So I recently bought this like piercing solution that has like tea tree and sea salt in it. And it's not done like amazing things, but it hasn't like fucked my piercing up. So yeah, I've been using that, but I'm going to buy the Neomed spray again when that runs out because I just don't think you should use anything but sterile saline wound wash on your piercings. But yeah, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.